Pride, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go to the future, can you tell us a little bit about your own background? Where did you grow up? Um, thank you for having me. Um, I grew up in Pretoria, in Swani, um, with I have two parents. Uh, both of them are still alive, bless. And uh, my two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. So we, we grew up in the heat of Twani and yeah, it was more than just a blissful childhood really. Right. And uh, did you have a dream career when you grew up? You know, I always had um, a revolving idea around career. And I remember this because people did tend to ask you what you want to be when you grow up. My mom was a teacher and she was a very uh, strict teacher to other people. So whenever she asked other people what they want to be when they grow up, she'd ask you. But um, I always thought I'd be something different every single year or every single month. So I wanted to be an interior designer because I liked moving things around in my room. Um, at some stage, I wanted to work in... Um, in, in anything to do with water because I was learning about dolphins in school and how some of the ocean animals are going extinct. So it was always an evolving target. And my, my father also made us read a lot and watch a lot of documentaries. And I didn't value it back then, but I think hearing other people's stories and autobiographies actually influenced a lot of what I thought about career later on in life. So I really, looking back, value those times where we had to read a lot about how other people crafted their lives and left legacies. So who inspired you in those early days? I think it was stories from the, 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 the books we had to read um, that, like I said, my father made us read quite a lot. We, we also read a lot um, of newspaper clippings at the time. He didn't want us too exposed to sort of the South African landscape, because I think he felt we were too young, but he always taught us about the leaders in, in, in the African context. He always taught us about, you know, global, global leaders, things you wouldn't read in textbooks in schools. So I found a lot of inspiration from history books and um, even, even anything as simple as a magazine. As soon as I saw a woman in a magazine, which was so rare, or a black woman in a magazine, literally never happened. So, but when it did happen, I was always inspired by those people. So I'd say my, my father was the catalyst and my mom was the, it gave us exposure, but my, my inspiration was definitely from magazines, from books, um, from, from films, anything we could get our hands on in terms of um, exposure to, to, to television. I just found inspiration from those stories. Some of them were not real, they were fiction, but they were, they were inspiring enough to look real. And I just drew inspiration from that. Now, prior from school, you went to the University of Pretoria, I believe. Yes. Can you, can you, yes, tell us a bit, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about your studies? So I, I went to an art school for high school and um, I was not an art student. It was the first year they were offering commerce. Um, so essentially I was a computer nerd. I, I, I used to do programming and um, economics was my major. So when I went to university, I was not ready at all. I was way too young. I was only 16 and I didn't know what to choose. So I naturally just gravitated towards what I already knew, which was economics. So I, I applied for econometrics, I think it was at the time. But after a year, I was so miserably bored. And it wasn't that, I, I actually distinctly remember the feeling. It was that I didn't feel connected to what I was studying. And on my way to dropping out, a friend of mine said, um, let's go to my marketing class. And um, afterwards, I will go with you to actually drop out of university. Um, after we went to the marketing class, I was convinced that I need to study marketing. And so I enrolled into a marketing course. They were doing a Red Bull case study. And I, I was so inspired by the case study. I even called um, the company that was distributing Red Bull at the time. And I, I demanded that they hire me. Um, they didn't the first two times. But on the fourth call, um, we made an appointment. And before I knew it, I was sort of doing student work for the, Red, for the company that was distributing Red Bull at the time. So I was very persistent, and so it began, the marketing career. So your marketing career began at Red Bull. Did you ever meet the founder? I believe it's Dietrich Mateschitz. Say that again? Did you ever meet the founder of Red Bull? 
I didn't. I <laughs> I didn't get to. But um, shoo, I I I think I met just about everyone who who worked in the company locally at the time. But it it it, it is an incredible marketing story. And till today, those insights hold true of how they landed amazing brand in every single country that they touched. So yeah, brilliant minds. So what is it about the world of branding that caught your attention and uh, I mean almost changed your life? It was the understanding of humans. It's the amount of time um, branding experts and, and, and people in marketing have to spend understanding actual people and what people love and what people are scared of and their fears and their joys and their aspirations and taking that and guiding them on a journey um obviously at the end of that journey there's a purchase so it does get transactional but the the part i mostly enjoy is just understanding people that drew me so close to to the industry and i think that's been my my superpower throughout the time in my, my time in marketing because i really think that if you don't understand people you know you can't necessarily build anything because it's like it's a collaboration brands are a collaboration with the human spirit and creativity is the outcome of what you see with brands so i was really drawn to just how people um behave and and, and what inspires them and what what are their fears and how do you make their lives better so brands have that power and i really love that about the industry and tell us right where did you go from red bull um, from Red Bull, I at the time I was paying for my own uh, fees in, in in university. So I, I worked I worked for Red Bull while I was in university, and I also started an events company because when when I was doing work with Red Bull, I realized that you know we'd be in very um, active spaces, and then we'd also be around um, events and parties. And I thought, gosh, I live in a student town, and there's there's so much um, experiential enjoyment that students want to get involved in but don't get the opportunity to so and there's you know we partied a lot which was fantastic so i thought hey i need to make money off this so i can pay for my fees so i had my own little events company running and um once i finished university and i had i was able to pay for my fees um i joined an agency so i started my career in an advertising agency um as a strategy intern and once i landed there i realized that i want to be able to touch and work on as many brands as possible because my curious mind needed more than more than one brand of stimulus right and uh, today you're the marketing executive at tfg yeah what were the highlights of your uh, career at tfg so far i think my my greatest highlight at tfg is working with women um, and we've been on this incredible journey to partner with as many women as possible who are on their way to success or have achieved the success. And we've, we're partnering with them to one, um, collaborate on how we can grow their space and how they can help us grow our space. But most importantly, we're partnering with them to learn how we can create um, an environment of leadership for women. Um, you know, the, the narrative around women leadership is not even close to reaching a peak. And I know we hear about it a lot, but there's still so much opportunity to, to create pathways for women to, to evolve, to grow. Women already know what they want to do. They, they just need to be left alone to do it and to be encouraged, yes, but also not to be limited just because they're women. So this journey um, that I've taken with TFG on, on on um i think in the last three years we've we've been able to almost connect with so many women we've been able to mentor so many women and we've been able to you know incubate businesses that women have into our environment so that they can grow as well i mean retail is a hard place so if you can actually provide the space for women to thrive in your environment it's, it's great we've also been able to create something that i'm most passionate about um my two loves if you ask anybody i'm i'm really i'm for i'm rooting for the women but i'm rooting for africa i love this continent beyond wow <laughs> beyond belief i love this country and we've been able to produce 
fifty percent plus of our of our of our production locally. And for me, oh gosh, it's it's not just a job; it's a life's dream to be able to say we provide jobs and and we do we do every bit of um, knowledge sharing with 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 people locally to actually like grow our environment. I I find that if this was not the peak i don't know what else would be so it's, it's been a, a labor of joy completely and, and tfg has been um the space where i just hold dear to me for affording all of us to be able to do this right now pride you're also a leading light in the industry in the marketing industry you are sitting on the cmo council for africa you are a judge for the financial mail ed focus awards um, what is your vision for the future of the industry, the future of marketing, and the future of branding? I'll start with what I've been concerned about recently, and then I'll go into what my dream is for the future. Yeah. Um, what I've been concerned with, and you know, I'm sure some in the industry share my concerns, is I'm not sure um, I'm doing enough to, to plow back the inherent knowledge about marketing not just from the tools that we use so I, I've, I've i've noticed that lately when we are taking on interns or we are taking on you know new skills into our industry we're not exposing them to the richness of for example analytics and data knowing um how what i said about consumers and how they behave you know in rooting the marketing from a from a consumer inside perspective and I've no, also noticed that we're not, I'm not doing enough um, on the training and skills of um, almost critical thinking because marketing and branding is, a, is a, also a skill about attention to detail. Every little detail counts. You almost can't miss anything. And the third one that's being glaringly obvious to me is how we reconnect marketing back into the business where it's not something that just amplifies brands but it's something that brings commercial value and sustainability to a business so to me marketers today should know how to connect into what finance is doing connect into what the hr team is doing connect into what the merchandising or service providing team is doing if you're in a service providing environment and taking all those insights from those departments and building innovation based on that, that is authentic that you bring to customers. So bringing marketing back into the organization and creating an ecosystem where the organization is dependent on that innovation for sustainability. Um, those three things have been very important to me. So my interaction in the industry is about education, it's about enhancements, and it's about making sure that we are future-proofing not just the industry but businesses as a whole so my vision is almost how do we bring marketing back into the commercial space but also stay at the forefront of innovation allowing companies to pivot and be agile when necessary um, i also serve as an advisory board member on on uh, for vega cape town the vega school cape town and that's an important part of my work because to me it starts with education right from when you are studying marketing. And I mean, you could be studying at any level. You could be doing your postgrad and you can even be a professional in another industry trying to get insight into marketing. But it's about empowering everybody with these tools for insight, but these ability to create innovation that is commercially sound and can create sustainability for companies. Right. Now, right on your LinkedIn profile, you talk about the three pillars of your branding and maybe life philosophy. Can you unpack that a little bit? I'm referring to the I, I, leadership. Yes, yes. Um, I think the first is um, all good businesses are for me anchored on, you know, business, the brand, and then also the people. And a big part that gets left behind um, in a lot of spaces that I've been in has been the people. Um, I think we forget that we wake up in the morning to be with people, to create with people, and they need to be the biggest advocate of everything that you build. So company culture and, you know, beyond just culture as a word, but culture as a philosophy is very important. Um, one of the studies that I, I, I've done in the past has been about how companies can actually thrive, be competitive, and um, completely profitable just from the advocacy of their own employees. So right. those three pillars for me are what holds companies together. And it's very important that your personal brand, 
um, your corporate strategy and your brand strategy are coherent and people are at the center of it. And Pride, recently you hosted a webinar on uh, how to build your personal brand. Can you maybe for our future leader listeners um, tell us what was the biggest takeaway for, uh, for an aspiring leader um, to build their own leadership brand? My biggest takeaway has been the power of self-knowledge. Um, a personal brand is not necessarily what people see when they're on the LinkedIn or when they're on your Instagram or Facebook. It's actually the story behind what they see, which is about your authentic self. Knowing your purpose has possibly, is possibly the most important thing you can ever do for yourself or even just reveling in your, your curiosity, if I can call it that. Because people, whenever I say know your purpose, people say, but where do I find this purpose? How does it work? Um, so maybe the pressure of purpose is too high, but definitely knowing who you are and where you want to go and how you want to get there authentically is a very important puzzle in your building your personal brand because everything else is only a tool. So Instagram and LinkedIn and all those channels are only a tool to express that personal brand. The right. biggest thing you can do for yourself is find your purpose and really be true to yourself and authentic about how you're gonna express that purpose. And then realize that your career is only um, a channel as well of expressing that purpose. You know, um, I, was, I was talking about the joy of being in a career that actually supports your purpose because it means that every day when you wake up you are spending majority of your time fulfilling that one thing that you are meant to be here for and you can't take away the power behind that everything almost feels effortless because it just seems so easy but that's because it's aligned so finding your purpose to build your personal brand is the best place to start and if you don't know your purpose yet Find tools that'll help you find the one thing that you do that makes others feel valued. That's part of purpose, that other people will feel so inspired and will have positive takeaways from what you are contributing. That one thing is possibly where your purpose lies. So is it fair to say, Pride, that you have managed to unlock your personal mission and uh, in a way you're building a movement, right? Yes, I, <laughs> my mom says it's my superpower. I think the day I discovered that I, I, I've, um, I live to help others find their purpose, almost find their mastery, if I can call it that. And it almost happens naturally. And to me, when I, when I realized that's where I should focus and plow my energy, then everything else became so much simpler for me. And I watch how other people have thrived. Um, people I've mentored or I've advised have taken from that advice and actually found their own way of expressing their purpose. It's actually incredible. Um, there is definitely um, a superpower in all of us. We just have to find it. Right. Now, Pride, let's talk about leadership. And I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean to you? The future of leadership for me is the quest to serve. I think the, back in the day when I used to see leaders, I, I, I realized that they were more maybe managers of moments or facilitators of moments. When I've met true leaders, it's when they had almost like a drive to serve, to understand people, to, to understand the future, to drive a vision towards serving. So for me, it's that quest to serve and setting an example, but also leading with that example. Um, leadership is a very complex, complex um, concept at the moment because you know, it comes from a human and being human means that you also have blind sides, right? So you're always gonna be in a position where you are leading, but you're not pleasing everybody. And that's okay because Leadership is also about learning and unlearning because we grow. But for me, that quest to serve is actually where true leadership lies. Now, Pride, looking back over your own leadership journey, what would you say are the key lessons? What are the key qualities that are most important for building future leaders? I think the first quality I adopted very early is um, transparency. What I mean is 
I've realized that to be a leader, you also have to be transparent and true to the people that you are leading. Um, you've been entrusted with a lot as a leader, whether you're driving a vision or, you know, wherever you're taking the people, you know, and to be transparent means that you're always engaging with them in a way that makes them feel that they can trust your word. Not that they can agree with your word, but definitely trust your word. So transparency is a big one. Um, the other, which I think it's a, a bit of an overused word, but the authenticity of self, which does actually partner with transparency a lot. Um, when you have a leader who doesn't necessarily always display the same values, it gets very confusing about who you're following. So being authentic is part of being clear about what your values are and where you will not step and overstep. There's no right or wrong, by the way, in terms of values, because we just all come from different backgrounds. But that transparency and authenticity allows people to choose you as their leader, as opposed to you choosing them um, to follow you. So I think that's very important. And I think the last one is leaders must be able to find the vision because you're driving people somewhere. And I think leaders I've respected over time are the ones who expressed their vision and also allowed people to contribute to how we get to that vision. So that collaborative leader is, as a quality, is important. Now, Prav, when you speak to aspiring leaders, what is it you tell them about social media? How should they handle and navigate social media to build their own leadership brand, their personal brand? This is possibly one of my favorite subjects at the moment. <laughs> um, social media, it, 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 it's like... A Things that almost think in the background, we now have a place to put it. And I think that's where maybe we go wrong. Um, first, I should say that I'm very pro social media to building your brand. I think we never before have we been given amazing platforms to do that. If I think of women back in the day um, where you had less and less women in companies, networking was possibly your best bet at showcasing your brand. And networking was hard because it's not like you were on the golf course, you know, playing golf or you were out, you know, if there were drinks after work or whatever the story is. You were not in those circles where you were able to actually express what your brand is. So fast forward to today, we now have platforms where you can control or rather navigate your brand your own way and express it to the world freely. So you should definitely see social media as a place for you to go and engage and and you know, express what your brand is. It's a powerful tool and you should use it to your advantage. That's what it's there for. What you should be cautious of is what you put on social media because it's not, you know, it, social media is not your journal or your best friend. It's, it's a tool to express a message. And if you stick to the message as opposed to almost using it as a completely personal platform, which opens you up to very difficult situations because you can't always control what people take out of what you're saying but not only that you're an evolving human and i said as i said before you have blind sides so i allow yourself to grow um in your private space but allow social media to grow your message in the public space and be careful when you mix the two because you almost open yourself to a space of vulnerability where you might not be ready to to necessarily face what's what's in front of you so it's about being careful around the medium and what you put on it it's important to put positive messages but it's also important to be authentic just know when your personal space has been evaded essentially and then lastly not all social platforms are for everybody you know some people like using instagram some people like using twitter some people like using linkedin you don't have to use all the all the um platforms you can choose the one that works for you i personally love instagram because i'm a visual person i've always loved photography and part of having a platform that you can share a message and use photography and video is very important i love linkedin because that's where i also gain a lot of knowledge i learn a lot on linkedin so i i make it an aim to also teach a lot because i'm almost giving back to the platform what it gives me and happily to do so um all of this personal branding conversation is about who your persona is in the private and the public. If both are congruent, it's, it's, it's perfect. But just be careful when you walk into the public arena with a lot of personal um, things that you haven't necessarily resolved for yourself or haven't figured out for yourself. 
then you're exposing yourself to public opinion before you're ready. So use it to your advantage, but you know, pace yourself and be kind to yourself so that you're not in a position where you can't answer for your own actions. Right, now, Pride, what is your advice for future leaders and especially women leaders? And again, looking back over your own leadership journey, what are the challenges they should expect in, your, in their own career? What are the, the pitfalls um, they need to be aware of um, that they might encounter in their future career? One of the things I've had to be very conscious of, and I've seen it in other um, colleagues who are female, is to know when you are receiving feedback that can help you grow. So where feedback is objectively about your skill versus where feedback is about marginalizing you as a woman. And in my case, where feedback could be about marginalizing you as a black person as well. So because I'm aware of my, my blackness and my, my um, gender, I sometimes, you know, in my younger years, used to walk into conversations about feedback or conversations about growth, thinking that, you know, are you talking, are you saying that I cannot do that because I'm a woman? Not realizing that the other person might genuinely be giving me feedback about my skill, an opportunity to learn something new. And so for the longest time, I think I was very averse to receiving feedback. So a big stumbling block in career management especially for women is just knowing where the feedback comes from and the intention of the feedback and what to take from it every new moment is a learning moment so whenever you receive feedback uh, allow yourself to filter out the things you don't need but also allow yourself to see the truth in the skill because then you will you will definitely motivate yourself to learn something new and you will motivate yourself to get out there the second is what i mentioned about how you get your brand out there um, I'm not shy in networking environments. However, if environments are not afforded to me, I don't tend to, I didn't in the past tend to push into spaces. So if I wasn't an all male team, which has happened to me on many occasions, um, I wasn't always open to pushing them to inviting me in because I just assumed they should know better. They should just invite me in. In the, in the latter years, I realized that the message of taking up space is so important, you know, so, I, I've learned that there's a, there's a place for me to actually be more persistent in, 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 in pushing into a space and, and taking up the space. I've also learned when it's the right time to not push, but rather to allow myself to find new spaces to be involved in. Women now have lots of platforms that they can use and, and, and use all those platforms. You know, go into people's blogs and read about their career journeys. You're gonna see very quickly where maybe you're limiting yourself in where you should be pushing, and where you should be just creating new spaces. Um, and I think the last one that um, I do wanna share is, in my career, I didn't always know when to ask for help and who to ask help from. Um, and I think that's kept me back a lot. And I, I don't know if I didn't know I needed help at the time, but I think when I did recognize that I need help with something, it wasn't that I was too proud to ask for help. It, it was, I just didn't know who to ask. And I think future leaders should know to just ask anybody as a start so that you can find the right person. You know, allow yourself to ask quickly so that you don't spend too much time wallowing in something you don't know either. Um, as we grow, you know, you, everyone says, oh, you're a marketing expert. No, I'm a marketing student. So I'm always now more aware of when it's time to ask for help or when it's time to ask for new direction, how to draw energy from other people and insights from other people, how to ask the right questions even. Um, allowing myself to do that has also meant that I'm not too shy to sound silly, you know, in a group where people are expecting wisdom from me <laughs> and I, I'm actually expecting, you know, knowledge from them. So that's been also an important part of the journey um, as a leader, and I hope that future leaders will know that it's actually okay not to sound intelligent, not to be the most intelligent person in the room, and to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you, so you can actually be open to asking for help and knowing when to put up your head for that. Now, Pride, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are the new skills, maybe one or two new skills that you would really like to, to factor in to that future leader curriculum? I think the, I was reading 
the World Economic Forum um, report on future skills. And three things that jumped out for me that I am also very um, passionate and aware of is the, the importance of complex problem solving. So, you know, futures, in a curriculum that I would design, I would teach people how to solve any problem. Not if you're in finance, you solve a finance problem. If you're in marketing, you solve a marketing problem. If you're in HR, you solve an HR problem. No, for every single person to be able to solve any problem in any category, because it's so important to be multifaceted. We're actually designed that way as humans. So for me, the first part of the curriculum would be how do you actually look at a problem no matter which sector it's in, no matter which um, category it would sit and be able to solve it. Um, the second one would be creativity. Um, with the pace that the world is moving in, creativity is such an essential skill because it means that no matter which direction that you take, you're able to see your way out of it or into it fruitfully and be innovative in that space. So it's, it's, it's an important part of any curriculum, which is creativity. I hear a lot of people also say, I'm not very creative. Every single person is creative. It's their birthright. And they need to almost learn how to exercise it. And creativity is not, you know, colors and videos and things like that. No, it's, it's the ability to innovate in the little space that you're in to take the space and make it, to leave it in a better place than you found it. So that's a very important one. And the last one, I would teach true collaboration. So coordinating with other people. Because, you know, as much as the internet has given us connectivity, we, we are losing human connectivity. And human connectivity is important because that's how we get things to work and move forward. So I would definitely include uh, collaboration or, or coordination with other people as a big part of that curriculum. And I think those three top skills for me are what everybody would need in such a curriculum. Now, Pride, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two of a youngster that you mentioned and uh, that you mentored and that took your advice to heart? Yes. Um, a young filmmaker and his friend who's a comedian um, walked into my office years ago. <laughs> um, I think it was 2011. And they, they were pitching an idea for how we can make financial literacy um, easier for kids um, to understand as a concept. And the concept was so amazing. But when I sat down with them, I asked them, what do you want to do with your career? You guys are so like empowered in terms of understanding um, South Africans. How, what do you want to do with that? The advice that I gave them at the time was no matter what you produce, because you are in the public arena of creating narratives through film, so they will live forever and they will carry a message. Never forget your why, why you are producing this content and how it will influence a future generation. Fast forward to today, um, I think um, his name is Ernest Ngosi. He, he's now been celebrated for really amazing films that, that have won um, awards internationally, one of them being Tina Sobabili. And um, he has taken that message and everything that he has produced over the years has literally been part of that human spirit that I talk about where he's used his, his why to actually create art, but with a message and to showcase South Africa to the world. I think his latest film, An Ordinary People, um, has, be, has been nominated for, for awards as well internationally and was part of a world premiere overseas as well. So he's doing really great. It's almost his, his whole theme is about dreams come true. And he's really um, adopted his, his why and his purpose into every single piece of creative that is produced since then. And I, I, he's someone I'm really, really proud of. Um, a second person um, that I want to share a story of is, is a woman that um, sat in a lecture that I gave um, at Triple A in Johannesburg also years ago. And a big part of the, the lecture was about being your authentic self. And um, her name is Amandle. She's a marketing professional. And when you meet her today, you almost see an evolved woman from the day where she realized she was different in that she approaches the world in a very, with a different lens. And she never knew how to contextualize that lens. Today, she uses that to actually 
um, empower other people, young people, to almost embrace the things that seem too different um, in their spaces. So she's a marketer, but she she's almost building, um, um, I'll call it an ecosystem for expressing where you're from. She's from Mahiking. She's got a magazine now that actually talks about what it's like to be from Mahiking. It's very celebrated culture piece, which if you can express that through your culture is fantastic. Um, she's doing other amazing things. Um, she's also one of the people I'm really proud of. So the two lessons from that has been each person I've mentored, I've just explained to them the power of purpose and knowing your why and the power of living your truth, your authentic truth and leveraging your strengths. Um, we do always do a little bit of work on knowing your blind side, but that's just to make sure, make sure that you're a conscious human um, and that you navigate your career consciously knowing that you do have a blind side. And if anyone points it out to you, you need to be active in addressing it, but definitely leverage your strengths and be authentic to your truth. Now, Prides, are there any role models of leadership that you have encountered in your career and maybe in your community that you would recommend future leaders should study and learn from? Sure, there are so many. <laughs> but um, recently, um, I would recommend future leaders to look at a um, uh, a gentleman called Alistair Mokwena, he was CEO of Ogilvy. He's just taken up a role as country manager for Google. Now that's a massive role. And um, what I really admire about his story is just how he has meticulously navigated his career. You can see all the, all the work he's put into his career and how it has derived fruit. But most importantly, you can see how many people he's built around him. He's got a league of many, many, many mentees and many, many, many inspired people, but he does it so quietly. You know, um, I think we are in an era with social media and personal branding where people think that, you know, the voices you hear, the, the people who shout the loudest are the best leaders, but there are some quiet leaders out there doing incredible work that's going to blow you away. But not only that, have uplifted so many people around them in their industry um, and taken them along with them. So definitely Alistair. Um, there's a woman called Nontokozo Madonzela. She's the group CMO of Momentum. And um, following her career has been incredible because she's managed to reinvent herself every single time in every single role that she's taken up. And you almost see how her superpower in reinvention is so good that you believe in yourself that you can do it as well. Remember when you walk into new spaces, you're not, you know, you're not, you don't have the upper hand. So you almost need to walk in with the confidence of someone who can, who knows how to almost command the space, but also learn from other people. And Nanta has been a, a, a great inspiration through that. So I would definitely recommend that you follow her. Um, there's so many women um, on, on, on social media that you definitely follow. Um, a, a, I follow a, a woman called Ilwat Elman, and she's actually Somalian, um, and she's been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, actually, recently. She's, she's in her late 20s, um, but her work around peace, I met her for the first time in South Africa. The work she does around peace and almost upholding true values of what it's like, what it's like to build a community that, that almost collaborates to rebuild is incredible. And because we live in a continent that we're always going to need to rebuild, it's people like that who teach you how to do it with humility, but also putting almost forgiveness at the forefront. Because when you hear her life story, and but you see what she's done with it, you realize that this is someone who you know holds no grudge, but knows how to rebuild a nation. And she's only in her 20s, so that's really incredible. Um, what I'll do is um, I'll also post a list of people who I follow that I who inspire me on my LinkedIn, and everyone's welcome to to look at that list and and maybe draw from it. Thank you. And um, right, how can our listeners reach out to you and where should they follow you? Um, on Instagram. <laughs> okay. On Instagram is where I share a lot of um, almost a visual expression of, of what I see, what my eyes see. On LinkedIn, definitely, um, where I'm learning and I'm also teaching. So giving back to the platform, what it's given me. Um, and... I think those are the best places. I mean, if you if you want to directly link up with me, there's always the the, the direct message in both platforms that you're more than welcome to use, and um, I will definitely respond.
Right. Now, um, last but not least, um, right, is there one piece of advice that you would really like to convey to future leaders that they should implement in their own lives? One advice. You're oh. going gonna to think you've heard it. No, 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 I know. You're going to think you've heard it before in this interview, but um, take time to learn who you are today. Um, you know, find out who, who you are right now in this very moment. Know yourself better. Ask yourself questions like, you know, what do I actually like? A big question to ask yourself is who chose my career? Did I choose my career? Did somebody else choose my career for me? Who chose what I needed to study if you have studied? Um, and who chose the path that I'm on? We forget that a lot of us, you know, arrived at university at the recommendation of our parents or our guardians at the time. And we, we you know, we were almost pushed into spaces. When I was studying, there was no such thing as, you know, a social media manager or a, um, there were so many careers that didn't exist. So I today need to ask myself, am I in the right career? And is this what I want to be doing today? And based on the knowledge that I know, am I on the right path? So for future leaders, I really would encourage that you, you find out a little bit more about yourself in the present day, not just what you thought you would be back in the day and not just what you want to be, you know, 10 years from now, but definitely today. And when you're done with that exercise, then ask yourself, how do you want to enrich other people with what you know about yourself today? And I think if you do that, everything else that you touch literally will manifest incredible magic and mastery for other people. Well, Pride, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and for shining your pride so light and, and for reminding us that once we unlock our superpower, anything is possible. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. This was an incredible reflective time that I really appreciate it.